Excuses. We got a million of them, don't we? I mean, what excuse have you used to not boot up and head to the mountain? It was too cold, it was too warm, it was too snowy, it was too sunny. Well, meet this next man and you'll quit whining, trust me. And better yet, you'll take this story to heart and share it with your buddies the next time they feed you a can't do. Jim Martinson has an attitude. He's not one to focus on what he can't do, it's what he can do that counts. That list is long and includes winning the Boston Marathon, gold medals at both summer and winter Paralympics, and taking title as the oldest athlete in the history of the Winter X Games. This double amputee believes he can do anything, he just does it differently. Jim grew up with three brothers in Sumner, Washington, where sports were a way of life. The family started skiing in the 1950s on rope toes at small areas in the Cascades, and Jim was a natural. As a high school linebacker on the state championship team, he went on to play for Yakima Valley Community College, but after a semester, he dropped out. The mountains were calling, and he was headed to a ski bum life in Sun Valley, Idaho. But Vietnam and the draft forced a detour. Jim remembers June 29, 1968 as a muddy, miserable day. With his platoon, he was jogging up a hill to retrieve supplies from a helicopter drop when a bouncing Betty landmine exploded. Jim woke up six days later, July 4th, in Japan, both legs gone above the knee. Once strong and 180 pounds, this soldier now weighed just 114 pounds. He spent nine months in Madigan Medical Center in Tacoma, learning to live without legs. Reminded every day he was alive for a reason. But to Jim, that reason didn't come into focus until he started playing wheelchair basketball, and then racing wheelchairs. With his goal set on the Boston Marathon, Jim worked with his basketball buddy Jim Hernandez to design a lighter, faster performance wheelchair. Weighing in at 25 pounds, a solid 35 pounds lighter than conventional racing wheelchairs, he knew his shadow was a winner. Looking for help to launch his new company, banks turned him down. After all, who would buy sporting equipment for the disabled? Jim was determined. He knew firsthand that athletes like himself were looking for tools to get back into the game and no one would steal his dream or get in his way of winning the 1981 Boston Marathon. He was back in the game and winning, but he still wasn't skiing. Then a friend took him to Snoqualmie Pass, where he was finally back on snow, turning in a monobob. In no time, Jim knew what he needed, a shock and a lift so skiers could get on and off lifts independently. Once again, his design made a difference and sales took off. He traveled to over 100 ski areas giving lessons, always an ambassador for disabled athletes, and inspiring the path of fellow Paralympians and honored members Chris Waddell, Sarah Will, and Muffy Davis. As a member of the U.S. Disabled Ski Team, Jim didn't just ski, he won, bringing home gold time and time again. At 63, this tireless competitor was even flying off jumps and skier cross at the X Games. Against the odds, Jim has shown the world what can be done, not just on the slopes. The first year of business, Magic in Motion sold $37,000 in adaptive equipment. When Jim sold the company 11 years later in 1992, sales had hit 2.5 million. Considered the founding father of adaptive skiing for his innovative as well as his athletic accomplishments, Jim Martinson's story will now be a permanent record at the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome honored member Jim Martinson. Jim, is Jim being will be escorted by his son Jeremy with the Medal of Honor being presented by honored member Chris Waddell. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Martinson. Yes, sir. <laughs> I told you tonight would put some stories in your head and your heart that will not go away, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Jim Martinson, 
having been elected by representation of the nine million skiers and snowboarders in America, we hereby bestow upon you in Aspen, Colorado, our country's highest snow sport award, the Medal of Honor. And we confer upon you from this day forward, April 9th, 2016, induction into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, where your accomplishments will forever be remembered. Thank you, Frida. Oh, thank you. All right, you guys can sit down. Oh, man, thank you for your service. Thank you for saying that. Um, woo, this is exciting. And um, who would ever believe a guy losing his legs in Vietnam would be getting into the Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. What a fantastic honor. Woo. You know, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be hard not to get choked up because my son walked me up here and I just had so many great memories as I listened to each one of you. Um, just really quick before I go into things, my friend Brad Parks nominated me, freestyle skier, broke his back skiing, skiing today. Chris Waddell wheeled up here, broke his back skiing, skiing today, won medals. He's in the Hall of Fame. These guys skied Bob Vogel, anybody know him? He, was in, he, he played in Hot Dog. He was, he was the Asian, I gotta use the word Asian here. He was the word Asian fellow. Uh, Bob, Bob's just, you know, started skiing in my sit ski, in my mono ski. Uh, Muffy Davis, Sarah Will, all of them. And we were, it was so fun. We just had so much fun because you know what happens when you lose limbs or lose something in your life? You have two choices. Number one, you can quit. Number two, you can say, okay, let's figure out how to start over. And, and that's, that's what happens. You know, I was, I was talking to, to Billy Kidd out here for just, just a second, and, and um, I went up to Crystal Mountain where I ski out of, and they sponsored me and helped me out, and I've had so many supporting people. Uh, Billy... Billy um, knows Jimmy Huga, and you know, they were on this team together. Well, Jimmy had MS, just like I had amputation. It was so hard for me to go to Crystal Mountain to watch the World Cup at Crystal Mountain because I went there, even though I was doing well, I stayed away from skiing because it, it, it upset me because that was what I was really, really good at. And now I had no legs. And, and Billy said to me tonight, that it took him a long time to get Jimmy Huga to sit in a sit ski and try it out. And you know what happens when you do that? You start smiling and you start having fun. And that's what it's all about. Everyone in this room has an, a, a story to tell about their life, but the big part of our life is to keep going. I was very frustrated. I woke up, I got hit on June 29th in Vietnam I woke up on July 4th in Yokohama, Japan. I looked at the end of my bed and my toes were gone, my feet were gone, my ankles were gone, my calves were gone, my knees were gone. Some of you older guys know what I'm talking about now, but so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> my knees were gone. I'll be 100 years old skiing just like I was when I was 20, and my knees will still be good. I just want to know what mountain I'm on. <laughs> but um, so, so what? What happened was I, I was so frustrated, but I came home and I had great support. I had the greatest family in the world. My mom and dad, Elmer and Esther, we had a cabin up in the, up in, uh, the Northwest. Crystal Mountain wasn't even around at that time. Uh, we'd, we'd go to White Pass once in a while. My friend Bob Grubbs here, and we'd ski all the time as much as we could. I started out on bear claw bindings with rubber boots. Really, that's the truth. And I remember getting, just before I went to Vietnam, I had a pair of head competitions, head competitions, 200s, and when I went to the Paralympics in 92, I won the Paralympics 
in a 225 downhill ski atomic. Can you believe that? On a sit ski, 62 miles an hour. Woohoo! Yeah. But, you know, we, it was, it's just been fun. You know, there's, now there's thousands of people. And you know what happened to me this week? I got to go over to Snowmass and watch the VA games and watch these guys ski. And people would come up to me and say, thank you, Jim, for, teach, for letting me be able to ski because you came up with this sit ski for an idea. And it was just fun. It was great. And I'm, thank you. I'm the kind of person that does things weird because I could have easily built a monoski for a bilateral above knee amputee. That means no legs above the knees. But I wanted to build it for everybody so I could have people to compete against. And, <laughs> and, and, and as I sit here, I Sarah Wells in the room, and I just never wanted to get beat by Sarah Will. How many times you beat me, Sarah? And Chris Waddell. I took him to Crystal Mountain, and he sweated like I am going down the hill. And he gets to the bottom, and he goes, now I know how to mono ski. And uh, Chris went on, and he beat me in every out. Oh, it's great, but that's what it's all about. But what happened today for me was better than anything in yesterday. Little Mia and Royals over there, my little grandson Charlie's three years old. And guess what? Charlie gets up the hill, and he says, Papa. He says, see mom and dad down there? They're bowling pins, and I'm a bowling ball. And I'm, <laughs> he said this, and I'm going to run into him. <laughs> and you know, oh, the best thing in life is to be able to reach out and touch other people's lives. I started this company building wheelchairs, building basketball chairs, tennis chairs, and all the different chairs, water skis, snow skis, hand cycles, and it's been so fun to watch people. This is a big industry today. It's a huge industry. Uh, if, you went over to, if you went over to Snowmass, you better get out of the way. Some of those guys don't know how to turn. You don't, you don't learn. <laughs> you don't get to learn how to snow plow when you have one ski <laughs> and you're skiing down the hill. You've got to figure out how to turn turn right away. And it's been a great experience. It's been wonderful. All I can say is thank you for the Hall of Fame for selecting me. I will do everything I can to support it. I appreciate everybody here. I appreciate my family. I appreciate Gary Sinise stepped up. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, he played my part. He, <laughs> I, he played the part I should have played in Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay, someday I'll meet him and I'll say that. And um, Chris the Mountain Founders Club stepped up and I'm now learning how to golf and I guarantee, I guarantee I will never be in the Golfing Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, honored member Jim Martinson. Jim, you are an inspiration to all of us.